Good morning, everyone. Uh, hope you all had a good uh, restful weekend and ready for another week. Uh, before we begin class this morning, uh, can I ask Lubega to lead us in prayer, please? Mom, let's pray. Father, Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful Monday morning, Lord. We also thank you for having kept us alive, not because we are puff. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Lubega, but we couldn't hear your prayer. Your uh, internet connectivity was uh, a little, uh, you know, uh, was breaking in between, so we couldn't hear your complete prayer. Uh, okay, let's just uh, pause again for a moment and let's just pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for... Uh, uh, another new day that you've added into our lives. We thank you for uh, the gift of life. We thank you, God, that uh, even as we face this day, we know that you are with us, that you would strengthen us, that you would perform all things for us, God, that you would uh, uh, do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can even ask, think, or imagine. We thank you for being with us for the weekend, uh, even as we have this week ahead with so many things to accomplish. Uh, uh, we thank you that you are our help, you are our strength, you are our wisdom. And we thank you that you will continue to strengthen us, enable, enable us, and help us to fulfill your plans and your purposes that you have for us in our life, uh, uh, even as we go through this week. We just bless this time. We bless every student, uh, every faculty. Uh, we pray that uh, even as we learn from your word, that each one of us will be enriched, will be strengthened in our faith, and uh, God, we would uh, uh, be strengthened in our walk with you. We thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, good morning. Uh, thank you for uh, joining class this morning. And uh, last class, we were looking at, uh, uh, anyone remembers what uh, lesson we were looking at last Monday? What were you studying about? No one remembers? Thank you, Anita. We were, uh, we was, we were looking at uh, the Son of God, the topic Son of God, that's, which is our last lesson. And... Um, we saw what scriptures revealed to us about God uh, who was there even before the foundations of the earth, even before the beginning. Uh, so we looked at what scripture reveals to us about this God who was there uh, at even before the beginning and he was at the beginning as well. And we looked at uh, these two truths that uh, the I am stood at the beginning and at the end and he declared everything that is in it. So uh, the great I am stood at the very beginning uh, and he is also there at the very end and he's declared everything that is in it. Uh, we also saw this truth that in the mind of God, he completed uh, everything even before he started it and he finished it even before he began. So even before things began to unfold in history, even the very plan of creation, the plan of redemption, uh, you know, creation of man, uh, the son of uh, uh, God coming down to earth, um, him dying on the cross, uh, being the lamb of God, all of these works were completed in, in the mind of God even before he started it. And, uh, you know, it was a done thing. It was a completed thing. It was a finished thing in his mind even before uh, he began. Uh, so we saw what the great I am uh, completed even before it began to unfold in history. Do you remember what are some of the things that uh, the great I am completed uh, even before it began to unfold in history? Anyone remembers what are some of the points we looked at?
what are some of the things that the great I am completed even before it began to unfold in history? Come on, what are some of the things that was conceived in the mind of God? Yes, he prepared a kingdom for us, uh, for his sons and daughters. Thank you, Zilatoli. What else? What are some of the things that God completed in his doing in his mind before it even unfolded in history? No one remembers? The work for our redemption was completed before the foundation of the world in the mind of Christ. Thank you. Uh, the work of redemption, thank you, John Paul. The work of redemption was completed in the mind of God even before it uh, was uh, unfolded in history. We also see that God, uh, you know, decided or it was a completed thing that he'll have a family, a family of sons and daughters whom he would love and be loved by him. He also decided that he will be our father. Uh, he decided that we will be adopted as his sons and daughters. And as Zilatoli said, he prepared a kingdom for us, uh, for uh, us who are his sons um, and daughters. And we also, uh, you know, uh, saw that uh, the plan of redemption, the whole plan of redemption from beginning to the end uh, was completed in the mind of God, as uh, John Paul has uh, uh, reminded us. And also we see that... Uh, you know, um, uh, God uh, choosing us and uh, his whole plan of establishing the church uh, through whom he would, uh, you know, uh, unfold his, uh, his works, his plans uh, uh, in his kingdom here on earth. Okay, so we see all of this was a completed thing, a done thing in the mind of God even before he began. And then we saw uh, how things began in, uh, in history. Uh, the, from the very beginning, we looked at creation, how God created us in his image and his likeness, and how God started unfolding his plan of redemption, uh, you know, um, through speaking to prophets and to judges. Uh, and then he sent his uh, only son. So we saw the eternal word who was there at the beginning, who was there even before the beginning, uh, became the son of God and uh, we also saw uh, you know uh, some of the few characteristics of the son of God that he limited himself uh, to being a human being uh, he as a son of God he revealed the father to us uh, he walked intimate uh, in the presence of the father uh, we also see that the son of God rested in the father's love uh, he walked in obedience uh, to the Father. Uh, he walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. All the miracles, uh, signs and wonders he did, he did through the power of the Holy Spirit because he was 100% um, man. Uh, he was also 100% God, but we see that when he became man, uh, he laid aside his... Uh, 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 the very essence of him being God, uh, the very nature of him being God, of him being um, eternal, of him being omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. Um, we also see, uh, uh, saw that as a son of God, he destroyed uh, the works of the devil um, and uh, he stood, withstood temptation. Uh, he completed the work of redemption. Uh, he was raised back to life by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we see that the Son of God is exalted and glorified with the Father and the Spirit. So this is some of these few points that we uh, looked at. We looked at various scripture references, uh, which, uh, which talk about who the Son of God is uh, and what he came to accomplish and what he has done. And all of this we actually studied in detail as each lesson um, uh, 
when we began this course. So we just kind of briefly looked at a few uh, scripture references to reiterate all that we have learned and just to reaffirm uh, who the Son of God is, uh, his person and his work. And then we began looking at uh, how all of this that we had studied, you know, uh, who this God is, uh, who was before uh, creation and uh, or before the beginning of the world or even before the foundations of the world was laid. And who was this God who, you know, and what did he, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 what did he plan in his mind and what are the things that he has even completed even before they began and how the eternal word became the son of God. Uh, even as we have looked at all of these things, uh, let's just pause and look at how, you know, all of this uh, affects you and me. Uh, what does it imply to us? Um, and what should our response be? <coughs> Sorry. So the first thing we looked at was, um, you know, our response should be that we need to believe in the Son of God. And uh, I said that, you know, Jesus did all this, what uh, he did, what God did for us. He did it out of his love for us. Uh, you know, he could have uh, just let us be in our sinful estate. He could have been, he could have left us as slaves of Satan. He could have had, uh, you know, started another whole generation of people in another planet. But uh, we see God's love for us that he did not let us go. Uh, he, uh, you know, like we see in the Old Testament, uh, he kept on wooing back the Israelites by his love back to him. And so we see that uh, all this, what God did from the very beginning, even before the foundation of the world, whatever his plan, his thought for us, you know, he did it out of his love. And uh, we see this in John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. We all know this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So yes, God has shown us his love. He has done everything. He has completed everything for us. But, you know, we need to believe in what he has done to receive that uh, into our lives, to appropriate that in our lives. In verse 17, it says, uh, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Okay, and in 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, uh, we have already read this. It says, in this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent us his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. This, in this is love, that not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our uh, sins. So the first thing uh, in our response to this great I am, to this great God who has done so much for us out of his love is to believe in him. And when we believe in him, what do we receive? We receive eternal life uh, when we believe in the Son of God. Uh, John chapter 3, uh, verse 18. Can one of you please read John chapter 3, verse 18? Uh, someone else can please read John chapter 20, verse 31. And, so, and another person can read 1 John chapter 5, verses 12 and 13 and verse 20. Can one of you please read John 3, 18? The other one is uh, John 20, 31, and someone else, 1 John chapter 5, verses 12, 13, and 20. Anyone would like to read John chapter 3, verse 18? John chapter 3 verse 18 says, He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Okay, uh, Has one of you opened to John chapter 20 verse 31? Would you like to read that? John 20, 31. I'll read, ma'am. Uh, but, but these are written... Uh, sorry, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. 
Thank you. So here we see that the word life there is not just talking about, you know, uh, the human life that we have, the breath of life that we have, but it's talking about the Zoe life, the God kind of life, the eternal life uh, that we receive when we believe that Jesus is the Christ, uh, the Son of God. And we read in John chapter 3, verse 18, uh, says that those who believe in the Son of God will not be condemned, uh, but would, uh, you know, um, uh, would, uh, uh, would receive life. Okay. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verses 12, 13, and 20. Can one of you please read that? One John chapter five verse twelve, he who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Verse thirteen, these things I have written to you, who believe in the name of of the son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the son of God. Verse twenty, and we know that. The Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and, and eternal life. Thank you. So um, here we see in 1 John chapter 5 that who, he who has the Son has life, who has, he who has the Son has eternal life. And uh, it says that, um, uh, you know, John is saying, I'm writing this so that, you know, you believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. So those who believe in the Son of God will have life. Uh, those who have the Son have the um, eternal life. Okay. So when we believe in Jesus, each one of us, uh, when we believe in our hearts, we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, uh, we receive eternal life. And we also begin to live by faith in uh, the Son of God. Uh, we read this in Galatians chapter 3, verse 20. Can one of you please read Galatians chapter 3, verse 20, please? Galatians 3, 20, now a mediator does, does not mediate uh, for one only. Sorry, uh, sorry, Zilatoli, it's Galatians 2, 20. I'm so sorry. Okay, so sorry. So sorry. Uh, Galatians 2, 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved and gave himself for me. Thank you, Zilatoli. Uh, so we see here that, uh, you know, those who, who have, uh, uh, you know, who uh, who believe in, in, in Christ uh, and have Christ living in them, uh, they have uh, the life of God. And also we see that, uh, you know, uh, they live by faith in the Son of God who loved them and gave himself for them. So we receive the faith uh, faith to believe uh, in 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 the Son of God, uh, faith to believe all of His promises that He will fulfill in our lives, uh, our faith journey that has begun, uh, you know, uh, and God will sustain that. The Holy Spirit will sustain that, even as we live a life of faith, just trusting in Him, uh, just looking up to Him, who's the Author, Perfecter, and the Finisher of our race. So we live by faith in the Son of. Uh, God and we are all we also receive uh, the spirit of sonship we are uh, called sons and uh, daughters so the moment we believe Jesus Christ as our personal savior the moment we believe in the son of God uh, we are ushered in uh, into God's uh, family uh, we are part of God's own family and um, uh, and we see that God's plan uh, 
uh, uh, of the ages, uh, you know, uh, is fulfilled when we believe in him, because we know that, um, you know, it was his very plan, even before the foundations of the world, and it was a completed and done thing in the mind of God, that, uh, you know, he has a family, a family who he will love, and we are, we would be loved by him. And when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we belong to God's own family. And, uh, you know, what God has uh, already planned, uh, what he has uh, completed in his mind uh, will become a fulfilled reality in uh, the world that we live in, in history, in our time and space and in our own lives. And we also see that we have union with God through the Son of God. Uh, you know, we become part of him uh, 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 you know, we become one with Christ uh, because we are part of his uh, uh, family. 1 John chapter 4 verse 15 says that whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we see that God comes and uh, dwells in us, um, you know, and, uh, you know, we become one with Christ. He dwells in us and uh, we can walk together with him. We can talk with him. He's our friend. He's our savior. He's our father. He's our redeemer. He's our savior. And hence we see that we have union with God uh, through the son of God. We are no longer slaves uh, of Satan, we are no longer enemies of God, but we become friends of God, we, we become one with him. We also receive the power to be um, overcomers, uh, overcoming, uh, you know, the lustful temptations of the flesh, uh, uh, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Uh, we'll be able to overcome uh, every temptation that uh, evil, evil dart that uh, the, uh, the evil one uh, throws at us, uh, we will receive um, uh, the power to be overcomers, overcomers of sin, uh, because we consider sin uh, as, uh, we consider that we are dead to sin, that sin no longer operates in our body. The power of sin is broken. The power of sin is canceled. And uh, we have the power to overcome uh, every sin, um, uh, uh, every uh, sensual uh, desires of this world, every evil desires of this world, uh, and every work of the evil one uh, that comes against us, we will be able to overcome. So we receive the power uh, to be an overcomer. Uh, we read this in 1 John chapter 5, verse 5, and Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. So can one of you please read 1 John chapter 5, verse 5? And Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, please. One John, yeah, one John chapter 5, verse 5. Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Thank you. So here we see that, um, you know, uh, we are able to overcome the world. Who is able to overcome the world? Uh, uh, and the answer is the one who believes in Jesus, who is the Son of God. So when we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, we're able to overcome, uh, you know, everything of this world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, we're able to overcome. And we also see that the Son of God uh, stands as our great high priest who is interceding on behalf of us, um, you know, who is helping us uh, to be overcomers, who is um, not only set as a model that uh, we can overcome temptation, but who is somebody who helps us in our weaknesses, uh, helps us in our temptations because he knows our weaknesses, he knows our frailties, and he is there uh, to help us. And we also know the, parac uh, the paracletos who is the Holy Spirit, who is one who comes alongside us to aid us, to help us, uh, to assist us, even as uh, you know, we face various kind of uh, temptation. So, can somebody please read Hebrews chapter four, verse fourteen, please? Hebrews chapter four, verse fourteen. 
Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Thank you. So here it says that, you know, uh, we have this great high priest um, who has, uh, uh, you know, who has become, uh, who had be uh, become like one of us who went through every uh, weaknesses, struggles, uh, who was also tempted in the f uh, flesh, uh, but who became an overcomer, who fulfilled uh, and uh, had, did, uh, had done and completed uh, the will of the Father and who's gone back to the heavens. But we see that, uh, you know, this who, Jesus, who is the Son of God, uh, is not just sitting there to judge us, but he is someone who is our great interceding high priest who intercedes on behalf of us uh, to the father uh, a great high priest who's helping us who's assessing uh, uh, ass assisting us assisting us sorry uh, and who's able to you know um, help us to hold fast to our uh, confession uh, the, that we have made uh, the confession that we have believed in the son of god uh, the confession that we are now his sons and daughters, we have the authority, uh, we have the power um, to overcome sin, we have the power to overcome every work of the evil one, even as we confess that, even as we use the authority that he has given us in his name, uh, even as we have the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, it's this uh, Jesus, the great high priest, who is uh, uh, the son of God, you know, who assists us, who helps us, who strengthens us, who aids us uh, uh, even as we journey in this life because he knows uh, the weak, our weaknesses, he knows our frailties and he's, help, he's able to help us to be uh, overcomers. Uh, we also see that uh, the Son of God was the prototype uh, for the sons and daughters of God. Uh, you know, um, uh, we see that... Um, uh, we read this in Romans 8, 29, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, and 1 John chapter 4, um, verse 17. Um, you know, the, the whole purpose that God created us uh, was, uh, you know, to reflect his glory. And that is why he created us in his image. He created us a, a, in his likeness. Um, and uh, the whole purpose that he redeemed us was also that we can manifest his glory and we can be like his son. Okay, um, so when he, uh, when the whole plan of redemption was uh, completed, you know, um, uh, you know, we see that um, God was saying that his plan uh, for us to be conformed back to the image, to back to his image and his likeness, back to the image of the Son of God. Uh, this was a plan that he had even before the foundations of the world. Uh, you know, and this was a plan that he had even before the beginning. And this plan uh, is uh, what has been fulfilled uh, today in our lives, even as we have believed in the Son of God, even as, uh, you know, we have um, put our trust in him. And, uh, you know, the moment we do that, we become his children and uh, you know the Holy Spirit who dwells in us indwells in us is um, uh, is sanctifying us is conforming us to the image of the Son of God uh, so we see that our purpose uh, is to be like the Son and this is the prototype um, you know of uh, 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 the prototype means an example, a sample, uh, first of his kind. Uh, and so Jesus was a prototype who was the perfect prototype. Um, and we are to be conformed to, uh, you know, this last Adam. We know that, uh, you know, uh, because of the first Adam, we all inherited sin. We inherited death, uh, pain, suffering, sorrow, uh, you know, uh, and we live in the mystery of our sin. But because of the last Adam, the second man, the spiritual man, uh, who is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, you know, uh, who is the prototype, who is the first of his kind, uh, who is the perfect uh, uh, being. Um, and, you know, we as uh, his children, uh, uh, as God's children, are conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, who is uh, the perfect man. And, um, uh, and our purpose 
in life is to be like this heavenly man. Our purpose in life is to be like the last Adam, who is Jesus Christ, uh, the Son of God. So when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, you know, and this work has begun in us, uh, God is saying that his plan for us to be conformed to the image of his uh, Son of God, which he had uh, before the beginning, uh, this plan uh, is being fulfilled, this plan is being completed, and uh, we see that each one of us are part of that um, plan. So even as uh, we become sons and daughters, we are being transformed uh, to being like the Son of God who uh, was the prototype, okay, who was the perfect one, and we are uh, being transformed into being like him, uh, so that we, you know, can be presented before the Most High God without any blame or blemish. And uh, we see that this is what uh, John writes. Um, um, uh, you know, he says, whoever abides in him should walk as he walked. So John, in his epistle, uh, in his letter, uh, in his, uh, the gospel, sorry, he's saying that, uh, you know, we need to abide in Christ uh, and we should walk as he walked. And we see that the Holy Spirit is working in us uh, to change us from glory to uh, um, to glory in the image, in the likeness of the uh, Son of God. And that is so wonderful that, you know, God has this great big plan of us, not just to uh, uh, save us from our sins, not just to redeem us, uh, but to make us uh, uh, like his Son, to conform us to the image uh, and the likeness of his Son. Going back to the very purpose uh, or the very plan that he had when he created us, uh, he created us in his image and in his likeness. And I explained to all of us when, uh, you know, we were doing that lesson, what it means to be uh, created in the image and the likeness of God. Okay. Um, so we see this in um, Romans chapter 8, verse 29. We've already read this verse before. Uh, we saw that God, who God uh, predestined, uh, he, you know, he, God, who he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many uh, brethren. Okay, and 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, uh, the, you know, uh, part of that verse says, because as he is, so are we in this world. So he has created us, uh, or he's conforming us, or he's transforming us into his image, into his likeness um, for a, pur a specific purpose uh, so that we can represent him here on earth so that we can uh, be his representative just like the son of god uh, who came and manifested the father who revealed uh, the father to us he revealed who the father is revealed the nature of the father revealed the works of the father to us exactly in the same way you know uh, god is conforming us to the image of his son so that we can be his uh, perfect uh, representatives here on earth so that we can represent uh, you know who Jesus was we can represent God here on earth uh, to those who do not believe so that when they look at our lives uh, they will see uh, Jesus and that's why Jesus said that you know uh, in my name uh, you will cast out demons, you will heal the sick, you will raise the dead, you will cleanse the lepers. And when he says, in my name, it not just means in uh, his in His authority uh, or the power of his name, it actually means that when we talk about his name, uh, you know, it's like he, uh, his very power, he is there. He's uh, he's represented there because we're speaking his name. We are identifying ourselves uh, in his name. So he's he's uh, very much present. He's very much there. Uh, but his presence is seen in and um, through us. So we are kind of representatives of who God is because we are. Um, uh, preaching in his name, teaching in his name. Uh, uh, we are part of his uh, family. We belong to his family and thus we have his uh, name. And so we represent him. And, um, you know, it is as, if, as, as to say that he is, you know, there in uh, very present. He's been seen in and through our uh, lives. So, 
the reason that we have are being conformed to the image of his uh, son is so that we can be his perfect uh, representatives, just like uh, the son of God was a per perfect uh, representative of uh, the his heavenly father or of the father in heaven. And we see that, uh, you know, we've um, also been made heirs of God and joint heirs with the son of God. So the plan that God had, even before the beginning is being fulfilled in us, uh, you know, when he said that I have made you hairs and joint hairs, uh, this is being fulfilled. Uh, so what does it mean that uh, we are hairs or joint hairs? Uh, we just don't inherit all of the spiritual blessings, uh, the physical blessings uh, of the new covenant, or also of the uh, covenant promises that have been made to Abraham, uh, because we are grafted into the tree of life as Gentiles, we have been grafted into the tree of life. Um, and hence, we receive the covenant blessings uh, of Abraham that God made to Abraham but more than that we receive uh, the blessings that uh, 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 that is uh, being made that was made by the blood uh, of Jesus Christ the new covenant uh, in, in in Jesus's blood we receive all of those blessings so it's not just talking about um, uh, blessings uh, in terms of spiritual blessings inheritance in terms of spiritual inheritance or material inheritance or physical inheritance uh, it's also talking that we are heirs means that we are uh, people who belong to god's kingdom and we are to build god's uh, kingdom and that's why first peter says that we are a royal priesthood a holy nation a people belonging to god uh, to declare his praises so we're here to um, uh, build the kingdom of God and um, uh, we are here to unfold his kingdom uh, you know extend his kingdom uh, to the furthest ends of the earth uh, because we are hairs and joint hairs uh, with Christ okay uh, and that is what we read in Romans chapter 8 verses 14 to 17 can one of you read that please Romans 8 14 to 17 Romans chapter 8. Uh, yes, Anita, I can go ahead. Uh, Romans chapter 8, 14 to 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again, again to fear, but to receive the spirit of adoption by whom we are cry out above Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children are with Christ, we suffer with that also. Thank you, Anita. So here it says in Romans chapter 8, in verse 17, uh, you know, if we are children, then we are hairs, uh, hairs of God, and joint hairs with Christ. Uh, so together with Christ, we're building God's kingdom. If indeed we suffer with him, we'll also be glorified together. So we see that, you know, even as we are part of God's family, we are his children, we are heirs of God, we're joint heirs with Christ. So, you know, um, uh, Christ through us, um, uh, Christ in us, uh, and the Holy Spirit alongside us uh, uh, enables us to, you know, build God's kingdom here on earth. So what is our mission? We saw what is our purpose? Uh, what is our mission? Our mission is to bring down uh, God's kingdom here on earth as it is in um, heaven. And we read that in Matthew chapter 16, um, verse um 19 where it says and i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven so what does this verse mean whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven what does this mean
Are you able to hear me clear, uh, clearly? Is my internet connectivity good? Or am I breaking in between? Okay. Thank you, Silatori. So what does it mean that, you know, whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven, whatever we lose on earth is loose in heaven? It means that, you know, even as we are people who are uh, building God's kingdom, God has given us his kingdom to build and to extend here on earth. He has given us the keys of the kingdom, keys uh, meaning authority, power, you know. Uh, he's given us the authority on earth to build God's kingdom, to build his kingdom here on earth, the kingdom of heaven, okay. So we, we've given the keys, the kingdom of heaven, that means we are, we are to, uh, we have the authority to usher in the kingdom of heaven on the earth to bring in heaven here on earth that means well you know whatever is not of god or not of uh, the kingdom uh, here on the earth that means whatever is uh, you know if there's sickness there's disease there's pain there's sorrow there's uh, uh, there's uh, hatred and envy and slander and gossip and malice and uh, you know every kind of evil thing you know uh, which we don't see in heaven uh, we bind that here on earth and we have the authority to bind that over um, our lives over our families over our, uh, our neighborhood, over uh, uh, the area that we come from, the city, the nation that we belong to. Uh, and God has given us the authority to bind things here on earth that is not of him, that is not of his kingdom realm, that is not of his kingdom uh, presence, that is not of his kingdom authority. We bind everything that is on earth. And what do we lose here on earth? Uh, we... Uh, we uh, we decree, we speak, you know, uh, what we see uh, in heaven. In heaven, we don't see sickness, we don't see disease. Uh, there's no hate, there's no brokenness, there's no sorrow, uh, there's no murder, envy, uh, gossip. Uh, and all of those things we don't see, uh, you know, there's no homosexuality, there's no prostitution, there's no adultery, uh, we don't find any kind of these unclean spirits, uh, uh, spirits of suicide, we don't see that in heaven, and hence we, uh, we bind that here on earth, and whatever we see in heaven, we release that here on earth, we release uh, God's um, uh, peace, his, uh, his, um, uh, his healing, his, um, uh, you know, his freedom, uh, his truth, truth that will set people free. Uh, you know, we release his, um, his authority, we release his joy, his love, uh, his patience, his kindness, his goodness, his compassion. Uh, we just speak it and release it over our lives, over our family, our neighborhood, uh, our city, and even our nation. So that is what it means that, you know, we have been given the authority, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and we bring down heaven here on earth. Uh, and that's what even Jesus taught us in, um, you know, uh, 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 the prayer, uh, uh, the Lord's prayer, he said, um, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So whatever God wills to be done here on earth, uh, we speak that, we decree that uh, in the authority uh, that Jesus has given to us and the humility, uh, we do that and we just release things here on earth that is in heaven. We bind things on earth that is not in um, heaven. So here we see that God is unfolding. Uh, uh, so far we've seen that God is unfolding his eternal plan in and through each of our lives uh, and so each of our lives you know uh, each of us uh, our lives are very significant and it has much purpose because here we are with uh, we are here with a purpose we are here with a mission we're here to extend God's kingdom uh, and to release uh, the kingdom of heaven here uh, on earth and lastly we see that uh, the church's foundation uh, is the truth about the son of god and in matthew chapter 16 verses 15 and uh, to 17 uh, jesus asked his disciples uh, but who do you say that i am and we see that um, uh, you know peter quickly without any second thought he just quickly answered he said you are the christ the son of the living god and jesus uh, told him, blessed are you, 
Simon, uh, because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And he says, um, I say to you, you are Peter, but on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell uh, shall not prevail against it. Uh, that's in verse 18. So um, uh, Jesus says that, you know, uh, this was revealed to Peter uh, by his father because he says, you are the Christ, uh, the son of the living God. And Jesus goes on to say that on this rock, that means upon this truth, on this rock means upon this truth that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Uh, Jesus said, I will build uh, my church so the church stands on a solid foundation. Uh, it's established on the truth that Jesus Christ is the living God, uh, God incarnate, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. Now we know that there are many enemies uh, of God who fight against this truth that Jesus Christ uh, is uh, not the son of God. They confess this uh, and they fight against the truth that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Uh, but, uh, you know, we see that um, uh, Jesus is the, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's alive today. He does the same things uh, that he did while he walked on this earth, where he lived on this earth. What we read in the Gospels, uh, he hasn't changed. Uh, in him, we see the fullness of the Godhead that dwells bodily. Uh, and even today, you know, in the name of Jesus, we see people are saved. They receive eternal life. The name of Jesus, sicknesses and diseases are healed. Uh, in the name of Jesus, um, uh, who is the son of God, the works of devil is destroyed. And in his name, uh, we see people receiving healing and wholeness. So, uh, you know, we've learned so much about um, who uh, this Christ is, um, that he is God incarnate, uh, uh, you know, that he is the son of God. He uh, became flesh. Um, he, he became uh, the, the lamb of God, the perfect lamb of God. He redeemed us from our sins, uh, you know, but he was raised back to life. He ascended back to the father in heaven, uh, but he lives forever to intercede on behalf of us. He's a great interceding high priest. So we studied all of this about uh, Jesus Christ, but now our rest, uh, all depends upon our response, whether we, you know, we have believed in him, uh, that's a good thing, we have received eternal life, uh, but are we living as his sons and daughters, are we conforming ourselves to the image of Christ, are we allowing the Holy Spirit to sanctify us, are we consecrating our mind, soul, bodies, our wills, our emotions, our, our uh, passions, our sexual appetites, our, um, our tongues, our mouths, everything, are we, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, are consecrating it every day so that the Holy Spirit can sanctify us uh, so that we can be um, his perfect uh, representatives. And the other thing is, you know, are we living uh, with this known fact, this known truth that we have been given the keys, the authority of the kingdom of heaven? And are we using our authority to bring down God's kingdom, uh, uh, the kingdom of heaven here on earth? Uh, are we, uh, you know, using his authority to bind things on earth here and to release uh, God's kingdom presence, his kingdom reign, his kingdom rule, his kingdom activity, his kingdom power, uh, and all of his uh, uh, kingdom fullness here on earth? Are we, are we mindful of that? Do we know that it's our mission uh, and, uh, you know, do we know what our purpose in life is? Our purpose in life is to be conformed to his image. And are we conforming ourselves to the image? Are we working towards that? And are we, uh, you know, taking hold of what God has taken hold of us uh, to build his kingdom as his hairs and as joint hairs of Christ? Okay. So this is our last lesson. And um, uh, we'll finished all of our, uh, you know, the, uh, the lessons for our course content. Uh, just like you all to pause and think, uh, even as we saw this great God, uh, who he was even before the foundations of the earth, what he planned even and was, it was a completed thing in his mind, even before the foundations of the earth, what he has done, you know, uh, and what he has established for us, what he has given us, 
you know, are we living true to all that he has called us to and all that he has accomplished for our lives? Okay, so uh, we finished this lesson. Anyone has any questions? Any questions? No questions? Uh, was this course helpful to each one of you? I hope you learned some things. Okay, thank you, Zilatoli. <laughs> yes, success. You have your hand raised up. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Yeah, there actually there is no question, but the time frame is actually affecting me here. The time frame. I, 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 scored my, I saw my scores. I wasn't really happy because I was unable to meet up the time. If there's any way the adjustment can be made. Sorry, you said that you saw your scores and then? I was not really happy. My performance okay. is a little bit low. Okay. And, and not like unusual like me. The last uh, assessments, you know, after I submitted, I saw my score was like, what is happening? I do. I have not really attended the lecture because of time factor. So, if there's any way we can adjust the timing, it's really affecting me here in Nigeria. So you're saying that you uh, you were not able to attend uh, some classes because of uh, yes. the time difference. First of all, okay. yes, yes. Yes, I yes. understand that. I know it's difficult, uh, uh, but success. All of the. Um, uh, the uh, the videos of the lectures have been posted on this on the uh, stream oh, page yes, in Google yes. Classroom. Uh, yes. So I would request you to uh, you know go to those videos, uh, the lessons that you have missed. Uh, please uh, listen to them, uh, okay. and you, of course you can keep on listening to it, and you can learn. Uh, and we also have the course content, so you can take time to read. Uh, okay. And don't have to worry about the uh, the assessments because you have, um, I think you have two more to go. So, okay. you know, um, yeah, Christology, you have uh, two more to go, one on March 28th, the other on April 11th. So you can still listen to the, uh, the lectures um, and you can read the notes and I'm sure you'll do well. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. But the important thing is that you, uh, uh, you know, not just get through with the assessments, but it's important that you listen to the lecture so that, uh, you know, you are uh, more built up in the foundational truths uh, so that you can preach better, teach better, uh, and, uh, you know, um, uh, be able to uh, share about who Jesus really is, uh, even as you study this content in Christology. All right. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. My dad is all for now. Yeah. Thank you, success. Anyone else? Any questions? Any doubts? Is there any lesson that you want me to, uh, you know, uh, do again? Yes. Yes, Abu Bakr. I just want to buttress the point that I've raised by sources, pastor sources. Here in Nigeria, we are, we are, that time frame is not convenient, as I said. And the listen to the video is not as if we listen it, and we hear it directly, live and direct. So listening the video, because I'm trying to listen to the video, but it's not not like listening to it directly as you are as you are teaching us in mouth. So if you can see anything you can help us uh, we, we, we appreciate it, Ma. Thank you, Ma. 
so I um, I'm just uh, restating what uh, you have mentioned. Uh, you're saying that uh, you know you tried listening to the videos, but uh, it's not the same as uh, being part of a live uh, class. Yes, that is true. I mean, uh, but whatever is being uh, said in the live class is uh, recorded, and that is what is there in the video. But I know it is quite different. Uh, and I also know it's uh, difficult for each one of you because you're in different uh, time zones. Uh, so it's, a, it's very challenging for all of you. Um, uh, but maybe you can write to the Bible College administrator and then we can see how best we can help students uh, in different uh, time zones. Maybe we can meet as faculties and try to, uh, you know, uh, come up with some plan but uh, please uh, feel free to also post in your uh, or uh, email us your suggestions uh, what you think would be best effective in your time zone uh, how you all can be helped okay ma thank you ma yeah i hope i ma. i hope i was able to help you in what you asked or the query that you had Okay, success, you have raised your hand again. Do you want to say something? No, ma, no, ma. Okay, okay. I'm okay with that. Okay. Okay, so anyone wants any other lesson to be redone, to be rethought because uh, you didn't understand, there was no clarity, it was quite uh, a, a difficult concept in theology to understand anyone? Okay, uh, there's no response on that. That means all of you have understood all of the lessons. Uh, but uh, you can, uh, you know, since we finished class, you, you still have a month to go with uh, uh, the Bible college classes still on. Uh, we finished earlier, uh, but you can use uh, the Monday mornings, the first two hours to listen to some of the uh, lectures. It would be good to go through the notes. And if you still have any doubts, um, you know, you can uh, post them on the stream page, uh, the classroom page, uh, the Google Classroom and I will answer your questions and queries. Or maybe what we'll do is, uh, you know, if we have um, about four to five uh, questions, then we can um, meet again, uh, you know, uh, when we can have one or two classes, uh, just meet again to answer those questions uh, uh, so that all can be benefited and all can learn. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Zilatoli. So uh, your uh, ass assessment dates, uh, the next one is on March 28th and uh, the last one is on April uh, 11th. Okay. Uh, I just hope that all of you take time to read the notes, not just when you're doing the assessment, you try to find the answers, but uh, please take uh, time to read those notes because these are very important things. This, you know, it's because uh, we we are basically only teaching about Jesus and His work and what He has done. It's important for us to be grounded and sure about these um, uh, truths. Okay, um, it will be nice to hear uh, to receive a feedback about these classes. Uh, also about uh, how the lectures went, the quality of the videos, uh, the classes, um, uh, the content that was taught. Uh, so please feel free to, you know, uh, post your feedbacks, uh, uh, positive and negative on the uh, Google Classroom page. Uh, it's a good way that I can learn myself uh, you know, and also improve. Uh, so you have any tips for my uh, teaching style, uh, the pace that we were going, anything, uh, anything small, anything big, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, please feel free to, um, you know, uh, post your uh, feedback. 
uh, you know, even about the assessments, you're most welcome to do so. Uh, it just helps me to uh, learn. Okay, so to do that would be, I'd be very grateful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining these classes. Um, just hope that uh, you know, even as we looked at uh, Jesus Christ. Um, uh, you know, uh, him being God, the eternal word, uh, the word becoming flesh, and what that, what the, he did for us, you know, it will just create a greater sense of, uh, uh, of um, uh, awe and uh, respect and honor to this God and that we would give him the due credit, honor, respect in the way that we live, uh, in the way that we conduct ourselves in his uh, kingdom and uh, the way that we build his uh, kingdom, just fulfilling his uh, mission uh, and fulfilling his uh, purpose here on earth. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'll see you on Wednesday for our doctrinal foundation class.